isn't this exciting? My name is Brent, I have VM on camera, and we're with Queen Karula, the dominant female leopard, and her wonderful cubs. Now, this is 100% live. You are seeing this absolutely fascinating behavior at the exact same time as we are. Remember, hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv if you'd like to know more about what's going on. Now, all three leopards are here. We're just focusing on young Hosanna, who is playing with his breakfast. Now, his little sister has been slowly stalking him for the last eight minutes or so. And you can just see her. Oh, there we are. There she is. Oh, she stopped now, but she was crawling towards him, but I think he spotted her. So I think on a nice cool morning like this, it's 17 degrees Celsius, 70 63, 67? Oh, I think I got confused. There we go, she's starting to stalk again. Uh, we could get some really interesting behavior between these wonderful little cubs. They could be very playful with their full bellies, no pressure, and I'm very happy that they didn't lose this impala kill on the ground overnight to hyenas. That she's stalking him. So she could pounce on him. We could see some great gamemanship from Karula's cubs this morning. That is little Shongile, the exquisitely beautiful one, the female cub. And my, how they've grown. Well, she seems to be indecision about pouncing on her, her bigger brother now, same age, but of course, as being a male leopard, he's grown quite a bit quicker than she has. just incredibly privileged to spend time with these incredible animals. What a way to start, what day is it today? Thursday. What a way to start a Thursday morning. I think so. I think it's Thursday. And of course, we're not the only, peop only people out here. Uh, Steph is wandering around on foot. So hopefully between us we're going to provide you with a riveting and exciting drive. Now, Shungile is getting closer and closer. She's just behind that marula tree at the moment. There she is, laying down again, but she has been getting progressively closer and closer towards young Hosanna. Now, Patricia's wondering, how long will an impala like this feed the three of them? I can't really see. It looks like a male, just from the size, but we can't really see horns the way the carcass is positioned. 
Wie ist hier Hohens, wer? Das ist viel mehr oder mehr? Wenn sie Hohens. Wenn sie Hohens. Ich werde wahrscheinlich, hoffentlich, was sie machen, ist, dass sie ein bisschen mehr essen und Krüller werden zu hoisten. Es ist ein Marilla-Tree direkt neben dir. Jetzt, glaube ich oder nicht, ich habe gesehen, Karula in this very tree feasting on a dica. That was quite a while ago, though. It could have even been before the cubs were born. Oh, there we go. Chungile is coming in. She's up on the move again. Let's see just quickly if she's going to come in. lies down again, which she has. Well, let's go say a very good morning to Steph on Shank's Pony. Oh, young Hosane is still tucking in to that impala carcass. Little Shongile has decided that stalking's a little bit too much hard work for this morning. And uh, Queen Karula is uh, doing her best impersonation of a rug. So all is well in uh, the Karula household this morning. You can see pantries full. Cubs at rest, no sign of the marauding hyenas. So, all well. Now, a very, very warm welcome to William from a bit of a chilly Juma this morning. And uh, William would like to know, do I think that the fact that nothing took the kill overnight could be with, for the reason that there are so many kills around Juma at the moment? Um, William, I don't think so. I think it's more than likely the fact that our hyena population has, has left us. Very sadly so. Uh, but for Karula, of course, that's a positive. Not having hyenas all about, stealing carcasses all the time. Yeah, what, you, what piece of the impala have you got there? Uh, edge of the ribs or the brisket. Now, of course, this kill is on the ground, and that's just because it's a very big kill. Lael in Washington is wondering, at what age will the young leopards start hoisting their kills? Uh, you probably find they've already made their first kills, I'm quite certain of that. And you'll probably find they have hoisted them already. Um, and it also depends on individual leopards. So it's very difficult to put a blanket rule on anything out in the bush because every animal can be different. I mean, even if we look at the adults, uh, Karula hoists a lot more than uh, her daughter, Shadow. But I'd say if they've killed a Franklin or something, oh, Shungil is on the stalk again. Didn't even notice her sneaking in behind there till the last second. There she is. So I'm pretty sure they've probably already hoisted something small, a scrub hair or even a portion of a kill. Look at that. Little brother, beware. Oh, big brother. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Incredible watching 
that incredible patience that is being shown by young Shongile. Has she been distracted by an insect? She's looking at something on the ground. What is down there? Hmm. Well, that is the joy of youth and distraction. So I was pretty sure she was going to pounce on her sibling, but then she spotted something else and has severely distracted her. see if she makes any more forward movements towards her brother. I'm quite sure he's aware that she's there. And their senses, even at this young age, are incredible. So you can see she's gone flat Pretty little lady. And remember, if you are grabbing any screenshots, share them with us using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, or you can pop them on our Facebook page. Uh, on yesterday's Sunset Safari. We saw a strange looking sunbird. It looked like a white bellied sunbird, but it had yellow tufts uh, on the edge of its wings. There is, which, there is, whatever insect it was has now been either escaped, I didn't think you see her bite it. Oh, hissing at brother, brother hissing at her. Now, look at that. She's already covering up stomach contents. Oh, brother hissed. Oh, he's going back to the serious business of eating. Look at this, there we go. Diane's wondering why is there a specific reason that they don't eat together. Well, probably competition would be it. And um, <laughs> of course, he's quite a bit bigger than her already. So it might be a little bit of a fight if they ate together. One must remember that leopards, outside of their time with their mothers, going to be solitary animals. As I said, he is a bit bigger than her, so he might beat her up a little bit if she had to Look at that. Isn't that just wonderful? Now Patricia's wondering, because his paws are so big, will this determine his body size? Not necessarily. Now, it is a good indicator, but by no means a 100% a uh, factual thing. But it is. it is a, it's probably means he's going to be quite big. And if you look at his potential fathers, both are quite big leopards. I mean, there could even be a leopard that Karula mated with that we don't know. Now he's 
quite full, so it looks like he's enjoying a bit of denmanship with that impala. Back to eating now. So we were saying we saw a very strange sunbird, and uh, it was a white-bellied sunbird that had yellow tufts on the shoulder. And uh, a lot of you, thanks for all the pictures. And indeed, in certain races of yellow, um, white-bellied sunbirds, they do have those yellow tufts. So. It was a, a variation on the white-bellied sunbird, not one I've seen on Juma before, so that's quite exciting in itself. But we're going to sit here and see what else happens at the wonderful leopards. And while we do that, let's go back across to Steph and see where he's marching about now. So he's dragged the carcass around a little bit, and it is indeed a male impala. Now we think it might only have one horn. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, the question begs, could this be Nelson? I haven't seen Nelson in a very long time. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm just trying to hold off another sneeze. Okay, I think it's gone now. So, young Hosanna is still tucking into the remnants of that impala. Looks like a one-horned male. Now we can't see from here whether it is our dear Lord Nelson. Now for those of you who don't know who Nelson is, Nelson was a one-eyed, one-horned impala with one ambition. And if it is Nelson, he's failed in his ambition. His ambition was to avoid Queen Karula. And this was the area where we used to see Nelson regularly. So I hope it's not, but it is a strong possibility that it is Nelson. So we haven't seen him in quite some time. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to get something to blow my nose so I can speak. Mm -mm. Oh dear. I apologise for my sniffing. There's quite a lot of dust in the air at the moment. So they've eaten nearly 50% of that impala, I would say. So most of the hindquarters, so just the, the head and neck and four quarters are left. Now Ryan's wondering, how often will a leopard catch him? an item of prey. 
Now, Ryan, it is all very dependent on what they've caught recently. But the answer to that question is, as much as possible. So while they're on a kill like this, they'll probably sit here for a day or two with three of them feeding. But uh, an adult leopard by itself, probably once every two to three days. But you must remember they're opportunistic. So in the, this week alone, we saw Karula take down a diker live. She hoisted it. She went to fetch the cubs. And then on her way back from fetching the cubs, she killed an adult impala. So if there's an opportunity to catch something, she will take it. Now, and that goes the same for all predators. Even the fattest, happiest lion, if it gets the opportunity to catch something else, it will. And that's the last of the, the rump disappearing down young Hosanna's gullet. Greedy guts. Sister is still sleeping behind those bushes there. We can just see her tail there. Look at that. He's really tucking in. I think after this meal, he's going to barely be able to move. He's going to have such a big belly. Remember, this is a live African safari. And you can send us questions through to hashtag safari live on Twitter. Or the email address questions at wildearth.tv. Like most predators, leopards will eat as much as po of poss as possible of their kill. Now, Susie's wondering, do they eat the meat off the legs? Uh, they do, Susie. And on smaller kills, they even break open the leg bones to get to the marrow inside. At the moment, he's eating the top part of the impala's back leg. Those are the hips. You can see the bone or the hole through the bone there. And those are the hips of the impala. Now we can hear only really clearly the cape turtle dove calling in the background. Oh, and some hardy diabus. We can't really hear him feeding because he is feeding off the, the soft meat. He's not sort of gnawing around the bones just yet. There's still lots of good meat left on this carcass. Can you remember, did Nelson, was Nelson blind in the left or right eye? I think it was the right eye. If the same draft is horn, we didn't have all horn, so it would be left if this was Nelson. Yeah. I can't remember where Nelson was missing his left or right horn. I haven't seen him in some months. So if any of you have got screenshots of Nelson, 
sent in was he blind? Or which side was he missing a horn? And uh, which eye was he blind in? I'd love to hear it. So if you do have any of that, send in the stream, screenshots or have a double check for us. Remember, hashtag Safari Live. Email questions at wilder.tv. Okay, well, we're going to sit here a little longer and, uh, before we move off to go see what else we can find out here. Uh, while we do that, let's go back across to Steph, who's got something that might have even poked Nelson's eye out. Well, Sane has finished feeding. He's gone to see Mother Darling. So, there we go. Just trying to get there. Do you need me to go back a bit more of him? we go, getting a clean from mom. And his uh, little sister is feeling left out and starting to move back towards where mom is. Ship, it looks like. Oh, not quite. Oh, yes, there we go. There's the game and ship. Where are you off to now, mister? You're heading back towards the, the kill again now. Aren't you finished feeding, fatty? Looks like mom is about to get up and head towards the, the kill. She stopped Hosanna's back on the carcass. <laughs> she got attacked by Shongile. What's her next move? Is she going to go after mom? Krula's laying down again. Will that little bouncing tail act as a allure for young Shungile? Still interested in her stick at the present moment. And uh, it is definitely not Nelson, as we can now see it's the two-horned impala. Oh, she's about to pounce. Oh, there we go, onto the tail. 
<laughs> Look at that little rotund belly. Oh, attacking the bushes again. Let's see what she's going to do next. At the moment she's still behind that bush. But I think there's a good chance she might charge at mom again. I'm going to move forward. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, look at how incredibly agile these little leopards are. Are you going to leap from above onto your mother now? Paul is wondering whether these cubs are fully weaned. Uh, they are already fully weaned, Paul. Very much so. Exclusive meat diet. Oh, look at that. Well, not the best landing. <laughs> okay, getting ready to jump on mom. One paw on the head, keep it under control. Oh, look at that jump. Having the best time. Oh, 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 that's going to be... <laughs> We can almost see that happening. That branch was a little bit too flexible for those maneuvers, young Shongile. I'm just going to take this opportunity to move forward now so we can probably try to get... Oh, is she going to charge again? Right, she's attacking the bush so we can get a slightly better view. Oh, she's going back to the same branch that caused her demise. <laughs> that time she pulled off the landing. Now what next, young one? You can see Osana's just cuddling the impala. Sorry about that. We are live in the bush, so we do have technical difficulties from time, but we're now with little Hosanna who's having the best time playing with his breakfast. He's heading towards his mother. Will he get ambushed by his sister en route?
Looks like he's going to ambush his sister. Isn't that just too wonderful? I'm just going to reverse back a little bit for you, Vamp. It is so wonderful when the little leopard cubs are being playful. Nice cool morning, perfect weather for it. And you probably find they are going to settle down shortly. <laughs> there we go, back into stalk mode. Being aggressive with that Impala, little strong you know? You've got it. Oh, here we go. Oh! <laughs> and here comes Mom. Mom is being ambushed. No? I think she might have given... There we go. Now, Tamira thinks that Kruger's looking a little slow. Is it age or has she been injured? I, I don't think she's looking slow at all, to be honest, Tamira. I think she's got a fat belly, lots of impala, and she looks quite healthy to me. <laughs> Proper siblings. Good takedown, Shongile. Tack that in parlor again. <laughs> A swat from mom. He doesn't want to be left out. It's just amazing. Sometimes it's better to just keep quiet and watch.
building around the Marilla tree. going to make the first move. Who do you think, Fiam? Shungile, I agree. I think Shungile is going to make the first move around the Marilla tree. But with those fat bellies, you can see the heavy breathing after that bath of playing. <laughs> there we go, game's on again. Okay, well, it looks like the games are calming down now for a second. So, while they do, let's go see what Steph's been up to.
pulling the kill into a bit of a thicket. And as it gets... Oh, what do you see in there? Ah, the warthogs are coming in here. That's why she's moving it. Now, warthogs can... I've actually, believe it or not, I've seen warthogs. Oh, these ones are not so brave, but big male warthogs. I've actually seen them try chase, especially in a drought, chase leopards off their kills and feed off the kills. So warthog will do that from time to time. I've seen them chase wild dog off a kill. I've seen them chase leopard off a kill and then take the kill for themselves. So like most members of the pig family, warthogs are omnivores. But these ones, not so brave. I mean, it might still be a bit heavy or a bit cumbersome for Karula to hoist. She probably could, but unless there's pressure from something like a hyena or a lion, she's probably not going to. There we are. She's looking up into the tree, thinking, you know, I should really put that up there, but it's quite heavy. No, looks like she's going to go towards the, the stomach. She might do some covering up job to try mask the smell. There's the stomach. There we go. Now we often see lion and leopard doing this, trying to cover the stomach contents of what they've killed. And Tamara is wondering why. Well, it smells and could attract other predators. So by putting a layer of sand over it, the smell doesn't spread through the wind as much. Oh, here we go. Game's on again. Our mom does all the hard work. <laughs> not in the mood. That was quite a good swat. Now, Doug in Connecticut is wondering, do leopard cubs make as much noise as lion cubs while they're playing. Not at all, Doug, as you probably have noticed this morning. And that's because just leopards in general make a lot less noise than lions. They rely far more on being silent and camouflaged. Incoming number two. So you would hear if this was lion cubs, there'd be a lot more noise. Oh, 
thought he was looking up the tree. Is he going to climb for us? After this day again. Boom! <laughs> oh. They're coming in towards mom again now. Oh no, they've been stopped. Mom's going towards them, going to join the game. Let's just move forward a little bit. Oh, no, there's a cub here now. Oh, it's difficult to see. Um, Evan's wondering how long the cubs will stay with their mother. Well, a young male can sometimes stay with mom up to two and a half, three years. Look, mom's up a tree now. So let's just go forward. I think the cubs are going to go back towards her. Sorry about that, I was just moving quickly. Um, I think she's gonna jump out of the tree. Now, Karina is quite playful with her cubs. And we've seen some incredible interaction with her a few weeks ago, but hopefully we're gonna see some more this morning. While there's action happening, I think let's enjoy it. So, Evan was asking how long the cubs stay with their mother. A male cub, up to sort of two and a half, three years. A female cub is normally independent by 18 months. <laughs> up, down, around. Almost don't know where to look, there's so much going on. But judging from the behavior now, I think it's going to calm down quite a bit in the next little while. Oh, the warthog's back. Kula spotted it. Just have a look. Now, that warthog is smelling the stomach content. And it keeps coming back to see if it can get a free meal. Well, warthog, you better be careful. You might become a free meal. Warthog, there's some bigger warthogs with it. Lauren's wondering why the leopards don't seem interested in hunting the warthog. While well, a warthog is quite a dangerous animal to hunt, they've got very sharp tusks. And Karula is actually looking up into the tree. So, I mean, a group of warthogs might be able to push her off. And because of the drop, they, they might be willing to do so. Now, very different story with a male leopard. Now, those bottom tusks of a warthog, the tashes, are incredibly sharp and can do an incredible amount of damage. Now, this is the second time the warthogs have come in, and this is the closest they've come in so far. Now, they've definitely picked up the scent of the carcass. That's what's bringing them in. They're still looking a bit nervous. to know, do warthogs kill any animals themselves or just scavenge? Um, the only thing I've heard of them killing is sort of baby plovers or eating plovers' eggs. 
Uh, they're not really hunting anything normally, they'll just scavenge. We are coming in closer and closer. I can't, I'm just checking where the leopard cubs were. And Karula is out of sight for the warthogs at the moment. saying Kula doesn't seem too perturbed yet but we'll see what happens when that, they get closer now it's probably about 15 to 20 meters between the cubs the kill and the closest pig at the moment now, unfortunately I can't start the car move the car it might change about of what about what's about to happen so we're just gonna sit here and observe for now I've got a feeling these pigs will probably just get a fright when they see the leopards up close, but you never know. And uh, drought can make animals do very interesting things. Shongili is going to go take on a water. <laughs> see, they're not running from a leopard that small. They yeah, just got a little fright when they first saw her. Oh, she wants to get a higher view of them. Oh, she fell out of the tree. That was very ungraceful. Still not running away completely. Krula not really taking any notice of what's going on. He's just snoozing behind the stump. There's the carcass with Hosanna. Shungile after her and there's the water going to set. I'll attack the water again and move off now. And one is let's see what the other does. Chris is wondering do leopards kill for fun or only when they're hungry? Ha! So it's a bit of a, a difficult question, isn't it? I don't think any wild animal kills for fun, no matter what we think. Uh, instinct takes over. So that there's stories of a leopard getting into a chicken coop, killing all the chickens. That's because instinct says it must kill what moves. So, And if they are able to move those carcasses into an area where they can feed, then they will feed on that over time. But... I don't think it's for fun, it's instinct that takes over. Now the warthogs are moving away and the leopards have all gone flat. Let me just reverse a little bit. So I think everything's going to calm down around here now. So while that's happening, maybe we might go look for some incredible Inkahumas. Let me know. Uh, I, think, I think we're going to go look for some Inkahumas. Uh, we'll be back here. Hopefully this afternoon, maybe even a little bit later in drive, if we have no luck with the incredible Inkawumas. So while we do that, let's jump on foot with Steph.